good morning class uh, today's uh, topic is about uh, <coughs> cement uh, concrete and its properties so as you see on your screen uh, we are going to look at uh, the is the syllabus first after which we will move on to the uh, material properties and construction techniques with rcc and the special concreting methods also uh, the second a uh, slide is uh, now what we are seeing on the screen we are going to look at uh, the basic uh, you know the elements so what is cement concrete now cement concrete it is a mix of hard material the aggregate and that is made to bind with a paste of cement and water so cement concrete is nothing but cement sand and water so that is what is cement concrete is and the cement sand and water since we have three materials here uh, we also will uh, you know come to a question what is the ratio in which these materials are mixed so that is when you realize that these ratios can be of uh, different numerals based on the kind of use it is put to so plain cement concrete or cement concrete is nothing other than cement aggregate sand and water mixed in a particular proportion or ratio now here we can say aggregate is a coarse aggregate like the gravel the blue jelly etc and the fine aggregate is sand and we also know that since air is present everywhere there will be a small uh you know small composition very negligible composition of air uh, to the tune of 6% or less than 6% that is actually present in the cement concrete now let us have a look at what is cement we are going to divide today's discussion or uh, session into uh, three Uh, criteria. First one would be we are going to take a look at what is cement. Then we are going to look at the types of cement, and then let us come to what are the properties of cement and the functions that uh, you know give cement its peculiar uh, place in construction. Now, let us have a look at the composition of cement before going into what is cement. So now we know that cement. by looking at the screen here it has a component called lime it has a component called silica alumina magnesia sulfur trioxide alkaline iron oxide and calcium sulfate now here if you look it's very very clear that lime is the major component of cement which is why cement is used as a binding agent it is a binding component Be due to the fact that the lime in cement helps in setting the cement and the sand along with it okay and then we have the silica and aluminum alumina which is uh, you know very relatively smaller composition magnesia sulfur trioxide alkaline iron oxide calcium sulfate all these in very negligible proportions now we know what is cement cement is a material that is used as a binding agent which as we already discussed in the previous you know uh, slide we know what is cement and let us now look at how is cement manufactured okay now here we can see that there are different ways in which cement is manufactured first the mining takes place in the quarry after which the crushing takes place drying and grinding followed by sintering followed by cement grinding and then comes the final product in the bags or sacks now we know that cement comes in uh, bags of you know 15 kg and 25 kg etc so now here there is something that we need to understand is the process of manufacturing cement then of course comes the next question what are the different types of cement of course we know that uh, there are different types of cement so for your information since this is the first session that you are getting exposed to the types of cement we will have a look at the different types of cement the most common type that is used is the opc which is ordinary 
Portland cement. Then comes the rapid hardening Portland cement, sulfate resisting Portland cement, white Portland cement, low heat Portland cement, Portland blast furnace cement, and water repellent cement. Now, the most common type used, as I said, is the ordinary Portland cement, which we also call, call as the OPC. Okay. So, now, the cement properties and functions. What is the purpose of having cement in uh, PCC, that is plain cement concrete, or in RCC, or in construction for that matter? Cement provides strength to masonry, stiffens or hardens early, Possess good plasticity, an excellent building material, easily workable, and it is a good moisture resistant material. Now, let's look at each of these aspects one by one. Cement provides strength to masonry for the fact that it has lime, so the setting property that's very important, and then the silica in it. It stiffens or hardens very easily, that is uh, due to the virtue of the lime that is present in there. Process good plasticity means you can mold it before it sets. So you can, you know, uh, easily mold it to the kind of uh, shape or to the kind of, uh, you know, the required, uh, you know, the geometrical shape that we want. And we know that uh, cement is an excellent building material. It is easily workable with and it is good with moisture resistance, which means it does not easily allow water or moisture to pass through it, which is why cement can also be used as a very good water uh, resistant or water dampener. Okay. Now, let us uh, have a look at cement in detail. Cement, one of the most important building materials, it refers to a very fine powdery substance made up of limestone which is same as calcium sand or clay that is the silica the bauxite that is the aluminium and iron ore and may include shells chalk uh, you know marble i'll just make the correction over here yeah marble shale clay blast furnace slag slate etc Cement is a binding agent that sets and hardens to adhere to building units such as stones, bricks, tiles, etc. The raw ingredients are processed in cement manufacturing plants and heated to form a rock hard substance, which is then ground into a fine powder to be sold. Current, uh, you know, practices where uh, you know cement is manufactured. Mm, you know that uh, it is it is very well within the reach okay earlier days uh, you have to depend on quarries now it is like you know very well within the reach cement mixed with water causes a chemical reaction and forms a paste that sets and hardens to bind individual structures of building materials which means the moment you add water into cement there is a chemical reaction that sends it Okay, and that is what will cause the setting to begin. Now, it is it used to make mortar. Now, the, the, the definition of mortar or the composition of mortar is nothing but cement and sand, okay, with water. Concrete is made of cement, water, sand, gravel mixed in definite proportions. Mortar is only cement, water, and lime aggregate so it is cement water and lime aggregate in and there is absolutely no gravel the moment you add gravel that becomes pcc or plain cement concrete now the mortar okay so concrete is used to bind rocks stones bricks other building units filling sealing any gaps etc Cement mixed with water silicates and aluminates, making a water repellent hardened mass that is used for waterproofing. So, as said earlier, since cement has an excellent property of resisting water or moisture, it is mixed along with not just in the plain form, but cement is mixed along with water silicates and aluminates, thereby making it a very good waterproofing agent. So, that is something that uh, you need to keep in mind. Okay. Now let us have a look at the 
uh, you know, now uh, uh, since the, the, the continuity is there, I would like to just bring in again and recall again. We, are, we have already understood what is cement, what are the properties of cement, what is the composition of cement, why is cement used, okay? What are the types of cement, okay? Now let us look at what are aggregates because now we are looking at plain cement concrete, okay? So plain cement concrete means cement, sand, aggregate, water. So we know about water, okay? We know about cement now. Let us look at the aggregates, that is the fine and the uh, coarse aggregates okay so in aggregates we are also having let us try to classify it in this manner fine aggregate coarse aggregate natural aggregate and artificial aggregate now fine aggregate is nothing but sand coarse aggregate is jelly blue jelly or gravel natural aggregate is what is actually found uh, you know in nature artificial is something that you manufacture okay so let us look at some of the coarse aggregates that is gravel which you see over here in the picture okay sand is fine aggregate crushed concrete is actually an artificial aggregate which can be used in the place of gravel and then of course you also have the ballast one where there is a, a, a ballastic reaction the the the, bri the byproduct of it also can be used now we are trying to get a little more into details of aggregate types. So we have, according to geological origin, let us classify the aggregates into natural and artificial. Okay. So example of natural is crushed stone and gravel. Okay. Artificial is the broken brick, the blast furnace slag, which is a byproduct, as I said earlier. Based on size, we have fine, coarse, all in and single size. So fine is that can be passed easily through a 4.75 mm seam. Okay, that would be the natural sand, the crushed stone sand, crushed gravel sand, etc. Coarse aggregates, it is aggregate most of which uh, can be retained on the 4.75 mm. So what is retained and what passes through? So what passes through is the fine aggregate and what retains or remains on the sieve is the coarse aggregate, the crushed stone or the gravel. All in aggregate is a combination of fine and coarse as you can make out from the name. Single size is which comprises of particles falling within a narrow limit of size. Basically, it would be having some kind of a unity. So that is the uh, the 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 meaning of a single size aggregate and also we have based on the shape we have the round ones the regular ones the angular ones flaky and elongated ones based on unit weight the normal weight aggregate heavy weight lightweight etc these are not very uh, you know very uh, important for your topic to be discussed here but still however it's good to always have a have a knowledge now let us see why now we already know why we should have cement in the pcc or why is cement a very important binding agent because of its setting property or hardening property similarly fine aggregates also has an important property and so does the coarse aggregate so the fine aggregates it assists in producing workability and uniformly it mixes it helps the cement to harden the coarse aggregate so that acts as a, the, the the fine aggregates of sand acts as a binding agent between cement and the coarse aggregate which is the blue jelly or the gravel and it prevents it helps in preventing possible segregation of paste and coarse aggregate particularly during the transport operation of concrete for a long distance for example if you are if you are having a concrete mixer in transit it is moved to a site which is a little far away the cement uh, the, sorry the sand or the fine aggregate it prevents the segregation that is it 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 uh, holds together the cement and sand and the coarse aggregate together it reduces the shrinkage of the binding material shrinkage means the cement okay shrinkage of binding material is cement so fine aggregates are used in a PCC or RCC to reduce the shrinking of cement. 
It prevents the development of a crack in the concrete. It fills the voids existing in the core segregate. Thus, it helps in increasing the density of concrete. It also assists in the hardening of cement by allowing the penetration of water through its soil. This is something of property which is very, very important. So, now let us also have a look at the function of the core segregates. Now we know cement, again uh, trying to you know remind you, we know the function of cement, we know the function of sand, we know are gonna look at the function of the core segregates in concrete. This makes a solid and hard mass of concrete with cement and sand, provides bulk to the concrete because we should try to avoid the, the use of cement to a huge extent. So the bulk is provided by the cost aggregate. It increases the crushing strength of concrete. Now that is a very, very important aspect that we need to make a note over here. And again, this is something very, uh, you know, uh, simple to understand. Using the cost aggregates in concrete obviously reduces the cost of concrete by using cheaper material because otherwise the cost is going to go um, uh, uh, very high. Now we are gonna make a summary of what we have discussed so far. That is, we are trying to look at cement, properties of cement here, properties of cement concrete, what is cement concrete, what are the different types of cement, what are the different ways in, uh, you know, what are the different uh, uh, materials that go into making cement concrete, uh, why is it used? What is, what is the, the specific need for each of this uh, material to be there, to be a part of the cement concrete, etc. So now with that, there is a question that we were talking about on uh, in the second slide. That is, how much of cement is required? How much of cement do we add? Okay. How much of fine aggregate do we add? How much of coarse aggregate do we add? So that is where we need to understand uh, something very important called cement concrete mixes. Now cement concrete mixes can be discussed as below. The nominal, the design, the prescribed and the standard. Now let us have a look at what these kind of concrete mixes are. Okay. Now we know that Concrete is composed of cement, water, and coarse aggregate. Yes. Okay. What? Cement, sand, water, and coarse aggregates. Okay. When mixed together, they create a construction material that hardens over a period of time. Now, obviously, the next question would be how much water, how much cement, okay, determines the properties of concrete of uh, uh, with respect to its strength, durability, resistance to heat or radiation, and workability. So, let us have a look at what is the nominal mix. This mix is basically used for ordinary construction, such as that of the small residential structures, and the proportion is 1 is to 2 is to 4. One part of cement with two parts of sand or fine aggregate with four parts of cause aggregate. Now, this is something that you need to understand. Now, the first number is the ratio of cement, the second number is the ratio of sand, and the third number is the ratio of aggregate that is needed based on the weight or volume of materials. So, this is the very uh, easy stuff that uh, you know you would understand that is a nominal mix which means normally used ordinary construction now let us look at what is a design mix design mix or mixed design relies on proportions finalized using lab test okay to determine the compressive strength of the mixture this will determine the strength you need based on the structural design of the concrete component so this is but we can say that this is uh, actually, uh, uh, you know, mix that is, uh, uh, you know, which is lab created, okay, where the compressive strength of the mixer is the key, okay. So, that is what we need to understand here. And yes, the prescribed and the standard uh, concrete mix that, of course, we uh, need not really look into that now, but let us see the various methods in which concrete is mixed, that is, the mixing of 
cement sand concrete uh, sorry cost aggregate and water let us see what are the different methods in which we can mix them step one mixing cement and sand in the required ratio one is to two is to four for example okay step two is adding cost aggregate to the already mixed cement and sand mixture in the required ratio step three you make a volcano barrier as you see on the screen which means you scoop out the stuff in the center to the surroundings to the perimeter and create a well a void well inside where you can pour water into and that actually stands out to become a volcano barrier and then you slowly add water and then shovel it uniformly and that is how we get the concrete mix so pcc plain cement concrete that is cement sand cox aggregate and water together mixed manually so this is the manual method of mixing now here we see the concrete mixer which is actually done using a machinery so manual is the one which uh, you know is still used is still followed still adapted okay but concrete mixer makes your work easier especially when the construction is of to a huge magnitude you have the drum over here the cement and sand in the required ratio are emptied into the drum slowly keep adding the aggregate to the cement sand mixture in the required ratio you start running the drum and then you're gonna add water and then keep running the uh, you know the 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 drum and then you get the fine so this is how a concrete mixer looks like now this is something that is uh, uh, of course which we really get to hear very uh, commonly these days that's a ready mixed concrete which means you have the readily available concrete coming to your site in a huge drum like this what you see here so what happens is the mixing happens in transit okay the raw materials are uh, you know filled in and the mixing here is this is a huge drum the mixing happens and the vehicle is in transit so this is something very very convenient and useful these days because it helps in the delivery the batch delivery from a central plant instead of being mixed at the job site where you have a lack of space or you know and it saves a lot of time too so this is how the ready mixed uh, concrete pcc is poured out onto the uh, onto a place on the site so concrete that is batched for delivery from a central plant instead of being mixed on the job site now each batch of ready mix concrete is tailor made according to the specifics of the contractor yes that is something very important and is delivered to the contractor in a plastic condition yes that is again something very important because the concrete should not set that's very important and it is as you see that the, the truck is having a uh, you know a drum which is cylindrical in shape and that is actually the cement mixer so what are the advantages of going with ready mix concrete is when small quantities of concrete or intermittent placing of concrete are required we can use the ready mix concrete they also are very ideal for large jobs where space is limited and there's little room for mixing plant and aggregating the stocking etc so this is what is the ready mix concrete is now there are three principal categories of ready mix concrete one is one is the transit mixed which we were actually discussing the transit mixed okay so i'm just trying to highlight that over here that is also known as truck mixed okay concrete materials batched at a central plant and they are completely mixed in the truck in transit frequently the concrete is partially mixed in transit and mixing is completed at the job site that is another option now transit mixing keeps the water separate from the cement and aggregates and allows the concrete to be mixed immediately before placement at the construction site this avoids the problems of premature hardening and slump loss that result from potential delays in transportation or placement of central mixed concrete transit mixing also allows 
concrete to be hauled to the construction site farther away from the plant. Now, this is something which you need to have a uh, have an eye on. This one disadvantage, though, is that the truck capacity is smaller than that of the same truck containing central mixed concrete. Yes, that is something we, of course, we understand. Now, there's one more uh, method that is the shrink mix concrete. Okay, shrink mix concrete is used to increase the truck's load capacity and retain the advantages of transit mixed, uh, mixed rain. In shrink mix concrete, in shrink mixed concrete, Concrete is partially mixed at the plant to reduce or shrink the volume of the mixture and mixing is completed in transit or at the job site. So this is another option. Now, again, trying to recap the different types of mortar. We know what is a cement mortar. We also need to understand there are other mortar types other than cement mortar, which is mud mortar, lime mortar, and special mortar. Cement mortar, of course, is cement plus sand plus water. Mud mortar has a composition with clay, sand, and water. Lime mortar is with lime, sand, and water. Special mortar, of course, as the name says, it is an admixture like a fly ash and sand plus water. So, cement mortar composites has wide application masonry, plastering, repairing damaged concrete, patching up, filling, rendering, floor leveling, etc. Okay. So, with this, we come to the end of the session. That is, we are trying to, we were trying to understand the basic new material uh, that was introduced to you today, cement, which forms the first unit for you. So, cement, its properties, what is cement mortar, what is a fine aggregate, what is a coarse aggregate, what are the different ways in which you can mix and make cement mortar or PCC, that is plain cement concrete. Okay, so this is the basics of unit one of this uh, building construction tree. With this knowledge, we can help you to understand what is a reinforced concrete construction, which means RCC. So by the time you understand and have a thorough knowledge of the cement, aggregates, method of mixing, the ratio, types of mixes, etc., and that of RCC, then we can move on to understanding the basics of construction, starting from the bottom, from the foundation to the sill, to the, to the plinth, I mean, then to the, uh, you know, lintel level, then to the roof, then to the next floor, etc. So this is how we have structured our lecture classes for uh, the unit one. Okay, so now going back to the syllabus here, uh, here we can now understand we are trying to, uh, you know, get an introduction to concrete. Okay, now after this, we will also have a look at RCC in the, uh, you know, in the next uh, lecture, then only we will move on to what is a frame structure and then we will move on to what is concrete foundation, what are the different types of foundation, different types of footings, and what type of footing is used, where that is what we are going to see in the entire unit one. So uh, I hope this session is very clear to all of you. Uh, we will uh, stop the session over here now and then move on to the next session, uh, which is about frame structure and reinforced concrete construction. So thank you.